All right, so we've been talking about LinkedIn, various aspects of it. Uh, we were looking at companies and pulse and so forth. Let's look at other valuable things here under interests. Under interests, we've got, let's jump over here briefly to online learning. Online learning, how many of you have heard of the website lynda.com before? If you haven't, lynda.com <clears throat> is a company that's been around probably 20 years now, and on internet time, that's a long time, and what they're all about is online education, training videos on a variety of topics. They're like the number one company for training videos. Now, they're not free. It, does a, it is a subscription price. I don't know what it is at the moment. You do get a, a free trial for like a week. But it is a, a bit pricey, about $300 a year. But it's got tutorials on everything. And it's the number one, so much that they are now a LinkedIn company. LinkedIn bought them. I don't know how much they pay, probably a few hundred million dollars or more. But LinkedIn bought Linda. So I haven't fully educated myself <clears throat> to see how great that partnership is. I don't know if you get any discounts if you've got the LinkedIn premium for Linda.com. I don't know yet. I'm just telling you. I've used this before. It's been around a long time. It's highly reputable, respected. And these are online tutorials, videos about everything. How to learn Photoshop, how to learn Mac, how to get good on eBay, how to program an app, how to use LinkedIn. They've got, even before they were acquired, they had videos on LinkedIn. So over a thousand courses on all of these things like leadership and marketing and all of that. So I won't dwell too much on this because this is not a, a free aspect but you can get back to it if you never knew about it. Interests online learning. That's lynda.com, L Y N D A.com. And um, I believe there's a student discount if you have a student ID and so forth. I think there's a process that you can go there and you'll get a student discount. That's one of the many places for you to further your education. Yeah. So lynda.com is one of the places you're going to visit. And another property that LinkedIn owns is also SlideShare. SlideShare, how many of you heard of SlideShare before today? SlideShare is like the YouTube of PowerPoint. YouTube, obviously, is a place where people share video. Well, SlideShare is a place where people share PowerPoints. You think, well, why would anyone care about that? This is actually very valuable. Let's take a look at it. Go back to your LinkedIn and this time go over interests, SlideShare. They've also been around a while, slideshare.net, and now they're a LinkedIn company. They've also been acquired for a few hundred million dollars. And so I, I was using this a while ago, not to be not to get hipster on you, but I was there before you and I was using it. <laughs> but uh, SlideShare basically, okay, here's how we here's what it is again. It's the it's the YouTube of PowerPoint. You create a, a PowerPoint presentation and you share it on, on SlideShare. Now you might think, well, the PowerPoints that I've seen are boring. Why would I want to share that? You can get inspiration from what people are sharing here to make a good PowerPoint. You can see this has been viewed 21 and a half thousand times. 1,600, 19,000 times. People are creating presentations and sharing them on SlideShare. And now because they're so integrated with LinkedIn, more traffic to these presentations. <clears throat> Featured slides. So Jan Rezab shared this four days ago. Seven and a half thousand views. From LinkedIn a week ago, 92,000 views. Um, so presentations on any topic, sports, recruiting, services, humor, PowerPoints. Okay, how does this matter to you? Depending on your company, this matters a lot. Let's say I'm a web design company, and I'm going to put together a simple five-slide PowerPoint where I count down the top five WordPress plugins, 
I can put together in PowerPoint a five slide presentation. PowerPoint nowadays has all of these templates built in. I can create a nice looking presentation of five slides with valuable content, five, the top five WordPress plugins. And then I can share it on SlideShare. You do have to create an account here, but it is free and it is connected with LinkedIn. But you create an account here, you share your presentation, and who knows, it may go viral. It may get a hundred views, a thousand views, ten thousand views. Well, again, you're giving away stuff for free to entice people. On that PowerPoint, actually, I'm going to make it six slides long, because the sixth slide will be brought to you by PMD Interactive, your leader in the marketing world. Click here, 10% off. So you're going to give away all those great five free tips, but then the sixth slide, or whatever way you want to do it, you then have your marketing. You saw how to do it, hire a pro to help you do it. So that's the big value of SlideShare. Share content, give away content, and then put your little marketing into it. Put your logo on each page. What if someone finds it here and they share it? You've got 10 connections on LinkedIn, but what if someone finds it here and they've got 1,000 connections on LinkedIn and they shared it? Now you've reached 1,010 people. Those people that had those connections it reached out further. Because that's what we see here, just like every network. This is almost like a social network too, basically. We have views, we have likes, we have shares, we have comments, just like Twitter, just like LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, MySpace, blah, 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 blah. They all have a way for you to be active. SlideShare, SlideShare is another, another one. Not valuable for everyone, honestly, but if you think about it, how could it be valuable to you sharing these presentations? I'm going to look up here, search how to write a, a resume. So Svetlin Nakov shared how to write a re how to write a resume. This has got 33 likes. Uh, Resumunk, how to write a resume. This has got 56 likes. Hussein Changi has write a resume right. Uh, done write resume has that one. So everyone's sharing their own way of writing a resume. 129 likes, two likes, etc. It doesn't tell you how many views though. I bet they got lots of views. Huh? Yeah, let's see. Can we filter that? Languages, types. No, it doesn't say views. It's saying likes. You'll see the views, I guess, once you actually click. It'd be nice if they showed the views beforehand. Yep, there we go. Nearly a quarter million views. But often a good indicator of likes to views. That one had a lot of likes and it has a lot of views. And here it is. There's the presentation. How to make your resume sound human. And then I can download it. People often ask, I don't want people to steal my stuff online. You have to break that mentality and you have to think, I want people to steal my stuff online. <laughs> I know that sounds extreme, but hear me out. I put my PowerPoint up there. I want people to download it and pass it through their email and share it everywhere. I want them to steal it because my logo, my branding is going to be on this. I bet if I go to the last slide, it's telling you exactly what I'm saying, that on the last slide it's all the credits of this company, such as Hire Me Now, it says right there, Contact Liz Ryan. You're getting that pop-up right there at the end of the presentation, right here. Now Jane's resume sounds human. You can put a human voice on your resume the same way Jane did. Read Liz Ryan's columns and follow Human Workplace on Twitter at Human Workplace and a link. Join Human Workplace as a member too. So after 11 screens of free stuff, then here's the salesmanship of it. Click here to, to, to get more stuff, buy more stuff, learn more, get better. So that's why you should think about how do I get my stuff shared more. Now, obviously, if you're making a living off of your photos, then, they're, then they are stealing your photos. If you share your photo on your gallery and you're going to make a living on that photo, yes, okay, someone did take it and share it and print it and they didn't pay you. There is, of course, still that aspect of you did lose out. But for that, I would say, unfortunately, I have to blame the victim and say, why did you put it online? If you don't want something to be, to be shared online, don't put it online. If you're going to make a living off of those recipes, don't put them online. 
unfortunately that's how that is with online content it's so easy to share and duplicate and spread out to the world that's why unfortunately we're growing up with a generation of kids that, are, that their lives are ruined in high school because they shared that photo they shouldn't have and it's gonna get shared all over the place and it's a digital file that gets shared forever so on a positive note you want to get your stuff shared all over the place if you brand it let's say okay someone did steal your photo do you have a watermark in the corner with your little web address and your copyright notice if you don't put it on as soon as possible your item might have might end up somewhere on some French social network some Chinese social network no problem it's got my logo my watermark it's still branded to me it's reaching more people So that's SlideShare and Lynda.com, ancillary aspects of LinkedIn, and uh, they are valuable if you if you think about it, especially SlideShare. Any questions on it? So you said once you upload your presentation, um, do you have to link it back to your profile? Like you're saying, oh, I just posted this like home, I can update as well, or is it just there. Yes, on LinkedIn you would uh, you would share it on SlideShare, and uh, on your LinkedIn here you would do an update, and I would say, hey everyone, have you read our latest our latest presentation? And that link is going to go back to your to your SlideShare. Oppositely, you can also once you've got an account on SlideShare, you'll have an, an account, you'll have a space where that's me on LinkedIn, and on LinkedIn I'm going to put in all of this info about linking back to my website or my on my LinkedIn and bio info and all of that. See, there it is, back, back there. So it's its own social network. I can teach a whole class just on just in SlideShare. It's a whole thing on its own. And you can embed it on a website really yeah. easily. Exactly. I, I like this presentation. I want to add it to my site. There's a little button to embed it right there. And then I can add that to my website, and people can see it on my website, back and forward and everything. Yes. On that, you would have to use software like Photoshop, but I'm going to recommend because Photoshop is expensive. If you want to add watermarks and all of that to your photos, I would recommend you go to pixlr.com, p i x l r.com, pixlr. This is like Photoshop Junior, and it's free. You go here, you can then add text to your photo, you can change, you can crop your photos, you can uh, resave them and all of that. It's a photo editor. That is obviously a bigger topic than we can talk about, but over at pixlr.com you can go to Pixlr Editor, which is like Photoshop Junior. You can go to Pixlr Express, which is just a faster way to add text and change colors and such. You can go also to, what else, Pixlr Desktop. Nowadays, it looks like they've got a downloadable version, because this one on the website, you have to be online to view it. But if you download the desktop version, you can do it without an internet connection. You've got Pixlr Mobile. So you've got a great photo you took on your phone, get the app, and then put the watermark right on your app. So Pixlr.com. They've been around a while. It feels like they've been around for like maybe 10 years now, which in internet times is a long time. And uh, I've seen them evolving and getting better and better, and eventually they got acquired by Autodesk. This is a huge name in the world of graphic design. So Pixlr. So earlier I said with LinkedIn, it has a figurative value and a literal value. Let's explore that briefly. Let's go to this website, money.msn.com. You can buy shares in LinkedIn stock. LinkedIn, the company, is a publicly traded company where you can buy shares. Uh, so just for fun, I'm going to go here to any financial website. I'm going to look up at the top, LinkedIn, so search up there, and the result here shows LinkedIn stock is $108 per share, so you can buy shares in this company. And in short, 
the whole purpose of this, the stock market, you know, it's to invest in companies, and when the company does well, you do, you do well. The old adage, buy low, sell high, buy a share at a certain price, and then if the price goes up, sell it, and you made money. And yes, we've been through a couple of big financial crises and such, and the, the stock market and all of that could be scary, but with a bit of education, we see that actually the stock market is one of the best things out there financially. And I'm not any sort of advan financial advisor or planner or anything. I'm just a person that, you know, educated myself on the finances and such. But what I want to say is, what if you had bought a couple of shares in Apple 30 years ago? What if you had bought some shares in Netflix five years ago? What if you had bought shares in LinkedIn a few years ago? That $10 worth of shares on LinkedIn now is worth $100 each. So if I had bought 10 shares of LinkedIn when it was at $10, 10 times 10, you know, it increases the value of this stuff. And yes, the stock market can be a scary thing. If I look at it here in five years, the LinkedIn stock price over here five years ago was $65 a share. And then it went on years and years and years. It got up to $253 a share. And then went up to $269. And 250 and very recently some huge crash happened with LinkedIn stock look at that big plummet right there and now it's down to $180 a share so yes if you had bought shares at this point they're still worth more than they used to be but if you had bought shares at this point you lost a lot of money and the stock market is about this ups and downs you never know when when to purchase shares you never know when the good and the bad will happen but look at this. If we look at the Dow, one measure of the stock market, the health of the economy of the U.S. Today, this is what the stock market did today, kind of a downward trend, not so good. If I look at it in a week, again, somewhat downward trend, oh, people are losing money. Look at it in a month, hey, that's an upward trend. So if we zoom back and see things on the larger picture, our stock prices you know, let's say they were at about $17,000 value, and then a month later, $17,500. If I look at it in a year, yeah, it's been a volatile year, big drops and big gains. What about five years? Lots of gains. What about all time? You know what this little speed bump is right here? The Great Depression in the 1930s. The thing that shocked the world. That speed bump right there is the Great Depression. And then here's the 70s and the 80s and the dot-com bubble of the 2000s, and we're getting richer and richer and richer, and then crash. And then everything came back, and everything's doing great, and then crash. And everything's doing great again, and a little crash, and a big raise. But in the long term, look at all of this value. So if you're only looking at it in this point here, the stock market is terrible. I lost all my money. If you look at it here, even at the lowest point here, the lowest point here is a lot higher. Again, I'm not a financial planner. I'm not telling you to do anything financially. I'm just saying to think about this because LinkedIn could be something to invest in. Literally, if I've got $100, I can spend in one share of LinkedIn, and who knows? It may recuperate. I don't know why there was this huge drop, but that could increase and be valuable to me. Facebook is also a company you can buy stock in. Facebook's current value is $110, not far off from LinkedIn. But Facebook, if I look at it in the longer term, has been pretty much an upward trend the whole time. No huge drops. So what if I had, what if I had $18 in 2012? I could have bought a bunch of shares in LinkedIn, and those $18 are now worth $110 each. It looked like LinkedIn was going to keep increasing, but something's going on, and there's loss of value. Twitter, you can buy shares in Twitter. Unfortunately, Twitter has had a really bad time in the stock market. Full disclosure, I own Twitter stock. I'm not happy. I've lost value in Twitter. Um, that's what Twitter's been doing in, in the last five years. Just downward. Twitter's not doing well. 
It's worth about $15 at the moment, and at one point it was worth $70. That's a lot of money lost there. So you can buy stock in Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Yelp, all of these tech companies and social networks. Everyone's waiting. When is the Pinterest IPO going to launch? When can I buy shares in, in Pinterest? Not yet. Maybe soon. But that's just a little sidebar here around that. Snapchat, that's it. Snapchat. Brandon. That's one of the newest ones, most valuable. That'll probably be several years. They're, they're doing really well as a private company. But um, I'm just telling you here, maybe, maybe that stock takes off, maybe it doesn't. Um, but uh, any questions on that? <clears throat> Let's come back to the LinkedIn site. I think I've covered pretty much everything. There's a couple of the screens here and there for you to explore on your own. But again, all of these networks are about sharing content, making connections. Use it how you wish, but use it often. Let me remind you again about deleting it in case you've created this fake account like me. Up on your icon on the top right corner, you can go to Privacy and Settings. Manage Privacy and Settings. And if you've got the old design, if you've got the old If you've got the old design, you're going to see three tab you're going to see some tabs here. One of them says account. Click on account. You've got the new design like me under basics at the bottom, the last item, closing your account. So there's a few steps that you need to do there. Or if you completely made this up with a completely fake email, just walk away. Don't worry about it. Doesn't doesn't matter. But if you want to delete it, it's going to be under there. You can check that out on your own. We're getting close to the end of the day, actually. So any general questions on anything we talked about today? Yes. We're going to have lab time in a moment, and I'll help that in a moment. Any general questions? Okay, so again, use it as much as you have time for and share content and what we learned on the previous networks also apply here. As a reminder, next week we're going to talk about Instagram. And we need to bring some sort of device, tablet, iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, etc. Because we can't do very much on the Instagram website, especially create the account. We have to use an app. Account in yes, exactly. For all of these, we'll do it together. So Instagram, another valuable social network. Literally, uh, Facebook paid about a billion dollars for it a few years ago. And we'll see how it's valuable to us as, as companies, because there's about half a billion people using Instagram. A lot of people. So that's it for the moment. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like to print anything. Again, request the videos. If you requested them last month, request them again because it's a new playlist. Remember to sign in. You can sign out if you'd like or I'll sign you out. Make sure you've enrolled in the class uh, with the ad code. And uh, you can turn your computers off if you want or I'll do it for you. And we'll have some lab time until about 12.45. We'll do it again next time. <clears throat>